Y'all ready to talk about some nibs today? One of the first things people ask me uh, when they're getting started wood burning is what each tip does and how to use it. And, you know, I try to tell people instead of assigning a particular function to each tip, uh, think about what you want to accomplish in a piece. You know, are you shading? Are you doing like realistic stuff? Are you burning some letters? Are you burning a sign? Kind of what's your project? And then choose the tip that's going to help you accomplish the burn that you're looking to achieve. I'm going to share with you my five favorite ones and how to use them in different ways and kind of what each one looks like in different kits because every kit has a variation of these five tips and uh, but they all look a little bit different. All right y'all let's talk about the skew tip. I have got mine loaded here. This is my true art and I've got it set to the 15 watts. Um, you can set it to 15 or 30. I've kind of rubbed it off there from using it so much. Uh, but I'm going to set to the 15. You want to use like a lower heat when you're doing lines like this because it'll over scorch or over burn if you got it too high. Every kit usually comes with um, some type of skew tip. So if I'm going to be outlining letters, um, I like to use the skew tip because it gives me a nice crisp outer edge. Um, I also like to use it for like any kind of silhouette burn that I'm going to be doing where I'm going to be filling in artwork because I want that nice clean border on the outside with minimal bumps. Let me just show you. I'm just going to burn some lines here. And you can see it just gives you a nice crisp edge, which is really what you're looking for. Now you can do other things with it. So if you wanted to get really good at like doing like a hatch shading type thing you could absolutely do that now i don't typically use this tip for that you want to start with a, a darker line and then kind of fade to a lighter one something like that um, hatching is really about just putting lines in place of a shadow. Um, this is kind of more like a, a gradient, but I mean, you can combine the two. Typically, the skew tip is perfect for straight lines. It's really um, the majority of what I use it for. But if you want to experiment and try different things with it, you can absolutely give it a go. Let's look at the razor tip skew. So I've got it loaded here. A lot of the wire tip brands are going to have different versions of skew tips. This is one of my Optima skew tips. You can see it's really nice and wide and uh, it just creates a nice, a really nice crisp outer edge. So again, just a really nice straight line there. You can see it's a little bit crisper than the brass tip, but still really nice, good crisp line from both of these. I use the ball tip a lot. And to me, the ball tip and the writing tip kind of overlap in duties, uh, but the ball tip has a really specific function and then it creates a nice, perfect dot pattern. So if you're wanting to do stipples and dot patterns and stuff like that, it's the perfect tip, but you can also use it for outlining and writing and for filling in with texture. It's an extremely versatile tip. On my True Art Brass Tip Kit, this is the tip I use for uh, my stipples and what I consider to be a ball tip. Uh, they have different versions of this. They have one that's a little bit more rounded or curved on the top, but it's bigger. And I like the smaller dots when I'm doing stipples. So this is the one I typically use. Every kit I have comes with some type of ball kit. This is the Optima, Burnmaster, Razor Tip, and True Art. So uh, let's look at the, the True Art first. I've got it plugged in and ready to go. And I've got it kind of high on high heat. I just want to show you, you know, if you're wanting to do a stipple pattern or some kind of dot pattern, how great this tip is. And doing these 
dot patterns. And it's super easy to do. So I typically use this type of texture to fill in or um, to create uh, some gradient effects. So you can do similar to what we did with the hatching where you start with a darker area and then you just kind of fade it out. But with the stipples, you just fade out the density. Not really changing the tonal value of the dot itself. I'm just changing how many dots there are. And it overall gives it the look of being shaded. Um, another thing I like to do with the ball tip is outline. So let's say you've got a combination in your lettering, particularly is where I find that this happens. When you have, you know, you wanna get some nice crisp outer edges, you can use the skew tip on the straight letters, like a T and an M and an N, but it's a little bit harder to use the skew tip on letters like a B and an O and a Q or an S. So the ball tip comes in handy for outlining letters that are curved. Um, I don't have anything uh, traced out here on the template, so I'm just gonna freehand. If you want to get some nice crisp outer edges on some of your curved artwork, the ball tip is a good option. It takes some time and some practice to get nice crisp edges with a ball tip. It's a little bit trickier than the skew because you might get some bumps. Uh, just keep a lower heat and don't push too hard and it'll really help getting those outlines. But it's a good combo to use, a rounded tip and a skew tip for your outlines. So if you have seen some of my squiggle portraits or some of my squiggle art pieces, um, I use the ball tip and the writing tip for that. Um, so I just kind of do these little squiggles like this. I don't try to make them nice and crisp and clean. I just kind of look at the density. So the more dense the squiggles are, the more it looks like a shaded area. It's a similar concept with the dots except I use squiggles instead. And I could get even denser with my squiggle work. This burner gets so, so hot. This might be one of the hotter um, brass tip kits that I've used. But you can see it does a great job at making these dot patterns these little stipples. Again, very, very versatile tip. Now, let's look at that writing tip. Okay, so let's talk about this writing tip. Uh, this is a another tip I use a lot, a lot, a lot because it really helps me in the squiggle pieces that I do, which is my primary style now. Uh, this tip from the brass tip kits is again what I refer to as the writing tip. This is Optima's. This is Razor Tips, and I believe Razor Tip has some other versions of this as, as well. Uh, this is True Arts. You see this one in a lot, a lot, a lot of my videos. Kind of my go-to tip for filling in with texture. It is also say, on my True Art. I'm at a 90, which is a pretty high heat. But I like to burn my textures on a high heat because I like to get, you know, sort of a deeper burn into the wood. Again, I do these like squiggles like this. Uh, but I also use the writing tip to fill in with a line texture. So if you've ever seen any of my lettering videos, you will see me use this tip to fill in. Let me just like freehand um, a T. It's not gonna be great because I'm not great at freehanding. Okay, 
that's not terrible, but it's kind of a boring tea. But you can see, let me turn my canvas a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. I like to do these, this line texture. It just creates a, there you go, you can see the texture a little bit. It creates a really nice texture inside of the burn instead of doing just like a plain flat fill. It just gives it a little bit more visual interest. So when you have a large piece or your piece with a lot of lettering, if you've got a nice texture filled in there, it looks really nice. So again, you can just do this, this sort of line texture with this tip. I find that the writing tip is typically one of the hottest tips because there's no um, there's no bends or welded pieces of that metal so the heat just flows right through that wire and it gets super super hot but you can see it creates a nice lovely texture in the wood there and if you can imagine like a full piece with lots of texture this is the razor tip version of this tip that I have so you can see I've got all my little squiggles there when I look at collectively when I'm using like what tips I use for what um, the writing a tip is probably the one I use the most uh, the writing tip and the ball tip have a lot of similarities and they overlap a lot. Um, but really I find the ball tip specifically does the dot stipples, you know, patterns the best. So if I'm going to be doing my squiggles, I typically reach for that writing tip. Alrighty folks, let's talk about this shader. So this is the shader tip that you're typically going to see in the brass tip kits. This is the True Art shader tip. I have got it heating up on the low heat setting. I typically use my shader tip on a lower heat because if I'm shading, then I wanna achieve a more, you know, a wider variety of tonal values. So I turn it down in order to achieve those lighter shades and then I just go slow if I wanna get a little bit of a darker shade. Now, if I really wanna get a flat burn, I will turn the heat up. Uh, to get like a, a black sort of deeper burn, but typically I use this on a lower heat So and you'll see every kit again comes with some type of shader tip. This is the razor tip This is true arts and true art also makes this little spoon shader tip thing um, I have used it works great. I don't typically use it. I've just I've kind of gotten used to the flat shader tip that they have um, Optima has a flat shader tip as well. And then this is Burn Master's uh, spoon shader. Let me turn on razor tips here and I'll show you. So I'm gonna start at a 450 because I like, again, I like starting at that lower heat. There we go. So you can see it's not super dark, but when you're wanting to shade, you're typically wanting to you know, create these gradients, maybe uh, add a little bit of realism to your pieces. You know, I did that realistic mushroom piece not long ago, and this is the tip I used to do that. I also turned it up like this and added some lines when I needed to add some lines. And, you know, if I wanna achieve a darker color, I just go a little bit slower. And I use this circular motion to keep the tip moving. Anytime you're trying to do shading or gradients, you want to keep that tip moving, moving, moving. So I'm going to go up to 600. If I want to achieve like a deeper burn, I can just go up in my heat. You know, you can also just pull the shader like this and create some gradients that way. Let me turn this on 
And I'm gonna turn this up to a higher heat because I'm trying to burn this deeper texture here. And it creates this lovely like horseshoe pattern. Lots and lots of fun today. Some people say it looks like um, shingles or like a scale pattern. You can see it in the wood a little bit better there. There we go. So let's look at this shader tip. So I've got it on the low setting. You can see it's not burning very dark. But you can also use it the same way you do the other tip. It's kind of a medium tone, but if I wanted to go a little darker, just go slower. The shader tip is an absolute vital tip in any wood burners kit. You can use it as a stamp as well. It makes a great like leaf type pattern. I've seen a lot of people use it like this. And then of course you can use it to fill. If you have an area where you just want to fill in with a dark burn, you can also turn the shader on its side and use it for line work. It's not going very well here, as you can see. There we go. I find that the skew tip is much better at this, but if you are using your brass tip kit and you don't want to change it out, um, you can always use this side of this in a pinch. Um, now, when I am burning animal fur, I will use the side of my shader tip And I just create animal fur using the side of the tip there. It creates nice little strokes like this. So again, shader tip, another great all around tip to have in your kit. You can use it to shade, you can use it for line work, you can use it for animal fur, you can use it for texture. Great tip to have in that kit. Well, let's look at the fine point tip now i this is the least used tip of the five tips that i use uh, i like it because it helps me get into small areas and, and create small details and it also helps me sort of clean up my artwork if it's gotten a little messy in some spots now you can see um, each one of my kits has some version of this i don't know if razor tip considers this their fine point tip I only have five of their tips, so I'm just throwing this in there because it does have that fine point on the end and you can absolutely use it that way. These two tips are from True Art and my True Art kit, and I have seen these in other tips as well, like the Chandler and the Walnut Hollow. Um, typically, the, you're gonna see tips like this in these types of kits. It is a soldering tip. Now you can use it on your wood burner to wood burn. I don't recommend it just because, because it's so long, um, they tend to break easier. It's just not meant to be used for wood burning. It's meant to solder, which you don't need a lot of pressure for. So what happens is people push down on them too hard and because it's so long, it just breaks super easy. So you wanna use the short ones that come in the kit. This is the one from True Art. It is probably my most favorite fine point tip. Um, I just like the shape of it. I use it the most, so I just am comfortable with it. You know, you can burn lines with it and stuff like that because it's kind of thin. Um, it doesn't work as well as a skew tip does. It doesn't work quite as well as getting straight lines as the skew tip. Just because of the, that sort of weird angle on it, you have to kind of hold the pen weird and it just kind of doesn't work as great. But it, it'll get you through in a pinch if you just absolutely need to use it that way. You know, it kind of gets down into the details and helps you create little fine point details. If you have some like small details to get into and maybe 
your um, writing tip or skew tip, which is too wide or too, too thick, you can use this fine point edge to just kind of get down into the smaller spots. And it does a great job of doing just that. You could use it for the stipple like this, but I mean, if you got a ball tip, you know, just use the ball tip. These are really, really tiny stipples too. Uh, but what I like to use it for also is kind of cleaning up my artwork. So like if I've got some bumps, just kind of go over the edge. All five of these tips are gonna help me accomplish anything I want to accomplish. If I'm burning a sign, or if I'm doing lettering, or if I'm, you know, shading something that has a realistic look, or if I'm doing my line art pieces, any one of these five tips are gonna be the five tips that I reach for, depending on that type of piece. While there are a ton of tips out there, and I highly recommend you experiment because we're all gonna be a little bit different and we're all gonna use things a little bit differently. The fine point one is the one I use the least, so if you wanna skip that one and just go right to these four, that's good too. Remember to just play around with these and kind of develop your own style and, and you know develop your own preferences for each one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you got some good tips out of how to do all this. I know it's a little confusing and overwhelming when you're new. And this was kind of a long video, but I wanted to make you sh make sure that you had a good grasp on each one of these five and the versatility of each one and, you know, just your options out there. Thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to like and comment, subscribe and do all the things. Thanks everybody. <laughs>